Actually set up, but I don't no read. problem. It's Mehdi Bray, B R A Y. Okay, do you have a card? Yeah, I'm gonna give you a card right now. Okay. And you're with who? Uh, Age of Pooper. Who? It's a blog. It's Age of Pooper. Okay. 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 Uh, you just want to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, just just in your own words, a summary of what's going on? Yeah, we're out here because uh, we realize that after 50 some years, there's still no peace between the Palestinians and the Israelis. And uh, we feel that one of the great implements towards not being able to have peace is certainly the plight of the Palestinians. We're here because the recent incursion into Gaza makes no sense. Now, one soldier, one soldier kidnapped, and now we destroy people's ability to have electricity, water, collective punishment. So what, what do you think should have happened then? I think that it should have been at least some diplomatic uh, negotiation in terms of trying to recover the, uh, the soldier. Right. I, I believe that that was, is possible. I believe that certainly Israel has the leverage, you know, and so like that. And certainly uh, there's other leverage from the other uh, partners that Israel has in terms of the European Union and the United States that this could have been resolved uh, diplomatically. So you don't support the capture of the uh, No, I don't support the capture. I mean, I don't, I don't support, you know, hostage taking. I don't support suicide bombing, you know, and I don't support an attack on civilians, innocent civilians, whether they're Palestinians, whether they're uh, Israelis, or whether they're Iraqis, whether they're Americans, you know, that is something that we don't support. But well, equally, I don't support the occupation of Palestine. I don't support my tax dollars funding uh, and, and contradiction to both uh, international law and U.S. law, the Arms Export Control Act, which says that U.S. tax dollars shouldn't be used to uh, tax civilians. Yet, uh, uh, we saw uh, over two weeks ago on a beach in the, in, the, in the Palestinian territory, a little girl, whole family wiped out. The only reason she was safe because she was in the water swimming, coming back screaming and yelling, you know. But yet, our tax dollars fund that in contradiction to the U.S. Arms Export Control Act. So we said that it's it's not right. And I also, I, I would say this. I think that it's time to end what I call a one-sided policy that favors the Israelis, you know, and, and allow them to do uh, death and destruction with impunity. Uh, and only what we have, what happens is we call for self-restraint. Yet, at the same time, uh, you know, the full force is placed upon the Palestinians, you know, to, uh, to renounce violence, yet Israel hasn't renounced violence. So, I'm saying what's good for the goose is good for the gambler. And I also say that basically uh, our one-sided policy that really does favor Israel, you know, does not, I guess because the Palestinians don't have a powerful lobby group, you know, in the U.S. Congress. But it's not in our best interest. You know, Israel served a very strategic value to the United States during the Cold War because many of the Arab countries were actually, you know, in the Soviet sphere of influence in the Soviet Union. Now we're in a, a, a post-Cold War era. We need to really have a serious discussion, a serious debate. You know, not you know, calling names or anti-Semitism or, 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 or Islamophobia or whatever. We really need to have a serious debate in this nation as to what should be our foreign policy uh, uh, relationship with Israel. I think we really need to look at that and it's, it's high time that we have that reassessment. Do you, uh, so, do, you so, do you support the two-state solution? A two-state solution? I do, absolutely. I support a two-state solution. I see that, you know, I think that those who think that they're going to drive the Jews to the sea, you know, are, are living in a fantasy world. And I think those who you know, want to have greater Israel, including Jordan and all of the uh, of the West Bank and areas of that, you know, up, up to, uh, to, to uh, Egypt, you know, uh, neither one of those are viable solutions in this day and time. So I think that we have to be realistic and realize that the Palestinian and the Israelis have to live side by side with secure borders, you know, and, and you know, with 
one another. That's, it may sound difficult, but that's the only solution. Uh, destruction of Israel is not a solution, and greater Israel is not a solution. The only solution, really, realistically, is a, a well-crafted and secured peace uh, and a two-state solution. And I really believe that it's possible, but I don't believe it's possible if we continue to be what is perceived all over the uh, world, in many parts of the world, a, a unfair and a one-sided broker. We have to be an honest broker if we really want to have a real two-state solution.